Good evening and welcome to Viewpoint. Tonight we're discussing the government's proposal to lower the voting age from 18 to 16. I'd like to welcome to the Viewpoint set prominent lawyer and former member of the Committee for Parliamentary and Democratic Reform, Robert Vasquez. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. And also James Torrente Galdez, who's an A-level student studying sociology, English and music, and you're also cultural representative for your school, mm -hmm. James. Yeah. So what are your initial thoughts to the idea that the um, voting age might be lowered from 18 to 16? Well, I think it's an interesting idea because I, I think, as with anything, it's got a number of, of good points that is going to come with it, but there's another of, a number of issues that will have to be dealt with to facilitate the change. Okay. Uh, Robert, I'll ask you for your initial thoughts, but first, uh, GBC has withdrawn invitations to representatives of both the government and the opposition for tonight's viewpoint debate. It follows a difference of interpretation of the regulatory authority's code on due impartiality, due accuracy and due prominence. Last week, GBC, in line with the code, invited representatives of the government and opposition to debate the lowering of the voting age to 16. However, following a difference in interpretation, the regula regulator issued a clarification this afternoon, which, according to GBC, did not fully address the issue. Despite a request by the corporation, no further clarification was forthcoming. The Viewpoint programme uh, has gone ahead, of course, without any representation from either the government or the opposition, and uh, we're reducing it to half an hour. Uh, so, um, Robert, your initial thoughts, uh, I think you want to have a, a sort of a, a say on that. Well, I, I just am extremely saddened that on an issue as important as lowering the voting age to 16, we end up with a dispute between, um, I think, which was... Uh, in, initiated by the government and I believe the Chief Minister, which has ended up with no member of the government or the opposition here to debate it. I also think it is extremely sad that uh, whatever the fundamentals of that issue are, it has led to an inability to debate something as fundamental as the lowering of age of 16 years by politicians who are elected to, 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 to debate those things, or even politicians who belong to parties who are not elected. The niceties of whether they should come or shouldn't come are not important. The fact is that they haven't come, and here we are with a reduced programme to half an hour to deal with a really a very important issue. And it's an issue that I personally have views on, but I have views on which are not either extremely favourable or extremely against them, but I do think that the debate that needs to be had is much wider than just lowering the age to 16. It's, you know, why is now? Why wasn't it mentioned in the manifestos of any of the parties at the last election? Mm -hmm. Should such a fundamental change be made without manifesto authority, or should they not? Well, and the, the it, Chief it, Minister it, has said in, in introducing the idea uh, in his interview with GBC, we've got a, a, a few clips of that interview which we can play, which I think mm -hmm. would help um, contextualise what we're discussing tonight. He does say that he doesn't think that it's necessarily something uh, that we need to... Uh, think about a great deal. So let's just maybe play this clip by the Chief Minister so that we uh, can set the scene. And so they're very interested in what uh, politicians have to say. They, they want almost more enthusiastically to have a say than, than some jaded people who've had the vote and sometimes might not bother to exercise it. Some might think it unusual that you should be proposing to allow 16-year-olds to help choose a government, whereas we don't allow them to, for example, drive or drink in public. But you do trust them, of course, to lay their, down, their lives down for the country because they can become recruits into the army and they can be sent to places where there, there is a theatre of war. And therefore, I mean, there are some things that we need to address again. We need to look again at what the driving age should be. We need to look again at all of those issues. And we need to sincerely uh, ask ourselves whether it's right, fair and proper that we can ask somebody today lay down their lives for the country, but we don't allow them to decide uh, or form part of deciding who should be running that country. Well, as you know, the Commission on Democratic and Political Reform didn't include lowering the voting age in their recommendations. Why are you going further than them? 
for a very simple reason. There has been a, a new event, uh, what we in the law would call a novus actus intervenens. Something has intervened in our thinking, and that is the, the referendum in Scotland, which has seen the extension of the franchise uh, to people at the age of 16. And therefore, there is a new dynamic in politics. There is a new dynamic in the Commonwealth, a new dynamic that is going to affect Commonwealth parliamentary associations uh, throughout. And we have to be uh, fleet of foot on these issues. There's no need for us to think about this very carefully because what is clear, and as I've told you before, they voted at the age of 16 in Scotland on the referendum on whether to keep the union or not. Therefore, if there is a Tory government and there is a referendum on something as important to Gibraltar as voting to decide whether or not the United Kingdom stays in the European Union is going to see 16-year-olds vote. So really, to extend the franchise here to people so that they can have their say on what the government is in Gibraltar makes absolute perfect sense as a result of that. A few things that we should say uh, following that. I think uh, the Chief Minister, following those comments, following that interview, subsequently said in Parliament uh, that uh, he, he conceded that he was wrong in saying that 16-year-olds can uh, go to the front line in, in, a, in a war, which they can't. I think they're protected by the UN Convention on the Rights of a Child, mm -hmm. which prevents anybody under the age of 18 uh, going to a theatre of war. Um, but... Um, he does say that it's almost, you know, as a result of the of the referendum in Scotland, that it's, um, you know, it's almost um, a fait accompli. It'll it'll happen here eventually in Gibraltar. And why wait to to be dragged kicking and screaming? What do you guys think? Do you think it's inevitable that it'll follow in Gibraltar? Or, I mean, well, I think the Scottish referendum is a fundamentally different issue, isn't it? Mm. Because if you're if you're talking about national identity and and a decision that 16-year-olds in Scotland will inherit rib particularly soon, mm -hmm. whereas with a general election, which would happen every four years, is something that may, so to say that someone on their 16th birthday would, um, that an election would happen, they'd suffer through two years where they'd be eligible to vote when they could act on the 20th. Absolutely. So a referendum on, uh, such as Scotland has just experienced, is perhaps a once-in-a-lifetime uh, event as opposed to a general election which comes every, every Or too specific years. an example to compare with, with a general election. Do you feel similarly, Robert? I, I think, yeah, I think certainly I agree with that. I mean, I think you're being asked a very fundamental question that affects you into your future, and it is a, a, a yes and no answer, which, uh, with, with many repercussions, but the repercussions and, 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 and arguments that I think can be uh, explained, can be understood much easier. Mm -hmm. But look, uh, I don't want to get into... Uh, whether 16-year-olds are mature enough to vote or not is a, is, is a value judgment that has to be made. I'd I'd Have they asked whether well, they want to vote? Yes. Has any member of the public asked that they want to vote? Well, let's, the let's commission that I was involved in didn't, didn't ask. ask that it should be increased, nor did anybody of the 22 people that came to give evidence to us, none of them asked that 16-year-olds should vote. So suddenly we get this debate uh, by because it has arisen... Uh, because the, the, the government party or the chief minister said, let's have a look at well, it. Well, no, apparently... And I think it's very much was, worth looking at yeah, it, of course. Apparently the whole cabinet was for it, but... Well, yeah. then, and I don't say that we shouldn't look at it. But, you know, we, the chief minister scattered over lots of things. Um, well, I think, interestingly... And that is yeah. the wider debate that we need to have. Yeah, I mean, What I think repercussions does it have on other things? Interestingly, the chief minister is obviously a very smart man. He doesn't get to become chief minister of Gibraltar um, otherwise. Um, but he has said there in, in his first interview where he's presenting the idea that 16-year-olds can go down and lay their lives, um, you know, for country uh, in a theatre of war, which is evidently wrong. And yes. he has subsequently... It undermines his own argument, does it not? Well, I mean, <laughs> it, doesn't it fuel the argument that perhaps this hasn't been thought through properly, mm -hmm. in which case, you know... I, should we be somewhat surprised by the notion that he is suggesting that it should be, uh, he'd like to see it in place by the next general election? Do you think that that would be too soon to, to, to sort of do it in a matter of months because a general election is likely to happen within the next 12 months or so? Yeah, I think it would be too soon, absolutely. Um, I think to present it now as a, as a proposal is a, makes it look like it's a case of, of doing it for the sake of getting votes from that demographic. What would he have to do to get votes, do you think, in, in, in your demographic? Um, I You're hear an A-level student. <laughs> you, you, we should say you, you've just turned 18. Yeah. 
a couple, but of, months, a, a a couple of, of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, there you go. And uh, a lot of your friends are obviously 17 and 16, you're, you're in school, mm -hmm. you're speaking obviously not for school, you're speaking as James. Yeah. But, um, you know, you, you know the sort of things that, that children are... Uh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> That's a, a very unfortunate Young slip of adults. tongue. Young adults there we go. Um, are, are interested in. Yeah. Uh, what would you think uh, would, would persuade them to vote one way or another? I think the government decisions that, uh, that we as 16, 17, 18 year olds tend to think about are the ones that directly affect us because it's stuff like education. We, there's a lot of talk about a thick, a thick form college mm -hmm. and talking about uh, integration between Westside and Bayside and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That, um, it's that kind of stuff and that kind of issues that that people my age tend to focus on. So, but Robert, aren't, aren't the pupil parent uh, pupil teacher associations, aren't the organisations within the school that that can ha have that debate and and make that point of view known? I mean, that is a very specific thing. I would imagine that certainly when I was at university, I don't. I was. At, I, I went to a private school in England. Unfortunately, a boarding school, so we didn't have that. But <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, yes, for lots of reasons. Um, um, surely, those points can easily be made with by uh, pupils' associations, by pupil-teacher relationships. And does it need the vote to mm. have that said? Because. Sorry, you were going to ask me. No, I mean, actually, we've got a short clip from some of your former teachers, mm. perhaps some educationalists, a retired head teacher and a retired sixth form coordinator, uh, which perhaps might help us uh, with some insight into the way that local politics might be taught or otherwise in school, which informs the idea of whether a pupil at the age of 16, 17 is ready or not. So local politics taught in school, I find that a dangerously Soviet and Chinese concept. Well, <laughs> politics which has local relevance, but of well, course you, you might look I at the still establishment... still find that dangerous. No, you might look at this, how, how for example, the AACR was established, how the GSD History. came into being... Yes, History, absolutely. Not, not politics. Well, I think they, they go hand in hand. I don't, I, well, certainly, what, it, what doesn't happen in the UK is current politics, because that is a very um, I have no problem with subject. history, local history being taught. Yeah. I think I would have a problem if there were classes in, 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 in local politics. Serious problems. Fair no. enough. Um, perhaps I have introduced that incorrectly, okay. but I think when we watch the clip we, <laughs> we, we'll get a better idea of what I'm getting at. Well, I think the young people or young adults today, I think they are very well prepared. There is a lot of information uh, available. And therefore, people are, and everybody really is very well informed as to politics or as to many other issues. There is a lot happening in the media. Uh, we all participate, young people participate. Uh, and I think to give them the, this opportunity, to give them this right to vote in elections, can only enrich the democratic process in Gibraltar. Well, initially, I think there's got to be a lot of consultation. The Scottish example involved a lot of consultation with young people, which we have to do here before we even start to ask them, are they eligible to vote? Also, the politicians themselves need to get together and have a debate, really. Obviously, it's not a, we mustn't, I don't think we must rush into it. It's probably a, would be a good idea to consult the community, uh, but I think it's a win-win situation. As somebody with Scottish heritage, uh, who followed the Scottish um, referendum closely, how do you... Is there a comparison to be made between a Scottish referendum and the right to vote in general elections in Gibraltar? Well, I, I wouldn't think it would be ready to vote in general elections, the 16-year-olds. I would say maybe have a referendum on it, see what all the age groups think about 16-year-olds voting. In Scotland, they were only enfranchised to vote at the referendum, yes or no. They weren't, they're not eligible for an open general election. So many actually, once they found out, they actually voted no. But they were very good on the debates, if you saw the television debates. I think we could have that here, more debating in the schools, in the family home. It would make more awareness, I think, create awareness between age groups if we did bring it up. In my opinion, it doesn't mean that if, they, if these young adults were given the right